ready. Take it away. All right, appreciate it, uh, Ross. Good morning, everybody. We're excited about another opportunity. Uh, hard to believe this is our last conference road game. Uh, seems like we just got started, and now we're on our uh, last road trip in this league. So, uh, and and, and, a, and definitely will be our toughest challenge. You know, toughest environment for sure. A uh, great place to go play a ball game. Uh, you know, one of the better environments, I think, out there in college football, um, you know, when it's rocking, and it'll certainly be rocking Saturday night. It's a good football team. It's that simple. I mean, it's a team that, that you know, a few plays from being undefeated, uh, without a doubt. I mean, they, they uh, are, you know, much improved, uh, you know, since Mike has taken over. Uh, obviously, he took over, and it was a – they had a lot of issues. Uh, he's done a really good job of, you know, really changing the culture. I mean, these kids are competing. Uh, they play hard. Uh, done a good job getting them better in the trenches because they're they're much much improved on both sides of the ball. There, um, they got seven starters back on offense and, and four transfers that have come in there and, and made a difference for them. So, three great backs. Uh, got a lot of respect for this quarterback. I think he's a. I think he's first of all a high character kid. Uh, he's a dynamic player. He's tough as they come. Uh, he just, he just, he's a relentless competitor, and you know, got a lot of respect for that. He can beat you throwing the ball. He can beat you with his legs, um, and uh, just a, just a really, really good player. All the backs, you know, I mean, they, they, they look like the Florida State backs that you're accustomed to seeing. They're explosive, catch the ball out of the backfield. Um, you know, they get it to him a lot of different ways. And uh, you know, this is a team that's that's got uh, probably more weapons than they've had in quite a while offensively. Um, you know, really good receivers, and then uh, you know, the kid that came in from Oregon, number four, really good player, and then obviously fourteen is a is a giant. I mean, six seven, <laughs> two hundred thirty something pounds, and uh, you know, very very good finisher on the ball. Uh, he's a problem. You got to know where he is all the time. They do a great job with their tight end, eighty seven. He's He's a fifth-year senior. 80, I think, is – I think he's a very underrated player. He's a sixth-year sixth guy. He's played a ton of ball. He's a crafty uh, route runner. And uh, so just just a really good group. Three starters back up front, brought two transfers in. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, again, a, a group that, uh, you know, can score. Uh, they're rushing for 200-plus yards a game. So I think, obviously, the challenge there is, is being able to – Control their run game, uh, screens galore. Every screen you can think of from receivers, tight ends, running back screens. Uh, you know, a lot of misdirection uh, and all the shots that come off of it. So really force you to be disciplined with your eyes and what you have to do on the back end to to uh, defend them. Uh, but it's all built through the run game. You know, I mean, so uh, they're averaging almost six yards of carry. So this is a that's the that's a huge huge challenge for us is to try to not let them be a balanced football team. You know, if they can have some balance, they're really, really dangerous. And then on the other side of the ball, uh, man, this is a – they got a bunch of NFL dudes on that side. I mean, they got some cats. These two safeties are going to be high draft picks. Uh, they are really, really good football players. Uh, you know, 10 and 27, I think their corners are outstanding. Uh, seven and eight, and then these are these are, these are the best – group of backers we've seen as far as just fast and physical. Uh, really, really good group. And then up front, uh, you know, I know they've had a couple guys kind of in and out like we have, but uh, in totality, this is this is an outstanding group. That number, that number 99 is a load uh, inside. Uh, 91 is the same thing. I mean, he's a hard guy to move, hard guy to run the ball on. Looks like they're probably getting zero back. He's an outstanding player, twitchy guy inside. And they got three or four guys at end that can all get after the quarterback. And uh, number five is is a very unique player. Uh, he's a dynamic pass rusher, and uh, has created some problems. He's got you know several sacks, and, and when he's and he's had limited reps with with his injury. Uh, but nine and six, you know, so a complete group. They've taken kicks back to the house. Uh, so they they've done it in a lot of different ways, from uh, you know uh, scoring in the kicking game. To uh, you know, turnovers on defense, uh, and you know, explosive plays on offense. So you know, I think I think a really really good football team. I think they're a team that that can not only play with anybody. I think they could beat anybody on any given day. I think they got they got enough 
uh, to beat you. So, you know, we'll have to play well. Uh, we're excited about it. Again, a good challenge uh, and a great environment to go play in. And, you know, for us, it's just about, you know, uh, executing at a high level. You know, you're, you're kind of, you know, our next goal is to win the division. So if that's, you know, championship football is about having championship execution, you know, one play at a time and cutting out some of the miscues, uh, you know, at this point in the season as we kind of go into the what we call the third quarter uh, of the season, you know, we have got to, uh, you know, be at our best Saturday night. So with that, I'll take your questions. All right, see you all there. <laughs> Dabo, uh, so much about college football is, is built on rivalries, but you probably agree. Who would you say that is Clemson's biggest ACC rival? Oh, man, uh, whoever we're playing that week. Uh, I know you don't want that answer, uh, but, I mean, listen, I mean, uh, I mean, we're at a point where everybody circles us, you know. I mean, we're that team that everybody's going to practice against year-round. They're going to they're gonna pay attention to every week, you know. They're going to – you're going to work in spring ball against that team. Uh, that's just – that's just where we are as a program. And – you know, I'm not. I'm not saying that in a. I'm not trying to boast or anything like that. But we, you know, our success that we've had, um, you know, brings that. That comes with it. And so you have to embrace that target, if you will. So I mean, man, everybody we play uh, is the biggest game. Now, certainly from a rivalry standpoint, and looking at, you know, your fans and all that. I mean, I mean, Clemson, Florida State, uh, is. I mean, it's. It's and we've been a division foe, and if you look at this league, uh, I don't even know how long they've been in the league. Tim, you know how long has Florida State been in the league? Well, ninety-two. Oh, ninety-two. Okay, well, all right. So that's a long time. Thirty years. Golly, we're celebrating our ninety-two national championship next week in Tuscaloosa. I ain't gonna make it, uh, but anyway, it's hard to believe it's been thirty years. But thirty years. You know, you think about how many times Florida State has won this league. You think about, um, and then even over the last 14 years, it's been a lot of Clemson, Florida State. This game many times has kind of decided who won the league or who won the division to go play for the league. Um, so, I mean, I, I think it's huge. There's so many um, great moments and games, and there's been a lot of cycles in this series, you know, all the way back to 1992. Uh, you know, so... Uh, incre and then obviously when Coach Bowden came, then you had you know the Bowden Bowl and all those years of that. I think that that even took it to another level, if you will. Uh, but I mean, I think you know that that's probably one for sure. I know there's been a lot of history with Clemson Georgia Tech forever. Uh, you know, I think for a long time, I think Coach Howard didn't Coach Howard go to Atlanta every year for a long time, like he, and they only won twice. So, you know, I, I guess they got a good paycheck, is that, you know, uh, but, I, that, you know, so I know from a fan standpoint, there's always been a, a lot there. Um, certainly Clemson, NC State, that's a textile bowl, you know. I mean, they hand you a trophy uh, when that game's over, right? You know, you get a trophy. A lot of people forget about that. But I think anytime you got a, a, a trophy handed to you after a regular season game, there's pretty good rivalry with it. Boston College. It, you, you, they give you a trophy. Uh, so, you know, I think um, I just I just look at everybody with, with respect, and I think everybody's a rival. But I know it's different for our fans um, and that, you know, th th that grew up with it. Um, and, and from a conference standpoint, you know, I, I would say, you know, NC State, uh, Florida State, uh, Georgia Tech, traditional. Virginia Tech kind of came in late. You know, but just long time traditional foes, that's probably your biggest rivals, I guess. Screen game you mentioned, how much does what you did against Furman you learn from that? Uh, what are some of the things you do to counter that? <laughs> well, yeah, well you've gotta you've gotta you gotta smell it out first, you know, you gotta recognize, do a good job um, up front in, in recognizing the the uh, you know, the tips and the and the and the tendencies that come with the screen game. Um, and uh, we got to do a good job of, of, of retracing, and 
you know, playing with angles and getting flat. Uh, I mean, we just did a poor job. And we got to tackle better. Um, and we got to support from the outside in when we do support from the from the back level. Uh, that's that's the main thing, you know. Just we can't. Uh, if it's too good to be true, it usually is, you know. So we just have to got to read our keys and uh, have our eyes on the right things and and react properly. Devo for Z will be back this week. Is that correct? Yep, he's going to be back. So what does that mean for you that now for you guys that all the guys you anticipated coming into the season are going to be out there and ready to go? Hopefully it's good. Uh, I, like I said, I don't think we get worse with with Brian back. I think he I think he makes us better. It's great to get Trey back last week. You know, he had a, a nice sack. Um, and then, you know, certainly getting Xavier Thomas going and continuing to go from with, with building his role, uh, getting him back fully confident, I think is, is, is huge for us. But we've gotten better. You know, we, we're playing we're, we're, we're playing better. Uh, these last couple weeks, I think we've played our best football defensively, and uh, we've cleaned some things up on the back end. We've played with a little bit more discipline, a little bit more uh, uh, attention to details. I think it's a reflection of how we've practiced, to be honest with you. I think, I think some guys have, you know, again, you, you, sometimes you, as I've said, you got, sometimes you lose before guys really kind of grow up. But, you know, we, we were fortunate that we won that Wake Forest game. Some guys were embarrassed. And, uh, you know, you can tell we all have had kids, right? You tell them the stove's hot and, you know, what do they do? You know, if I tell all y'all, hey, don't look in the back of the room right there. That Don't look what's going on back there. Y'all all want to turn and look back there. So, you know, that's, that's kind of that's where we are. And I think some guys have just changed their practice habits a little bit. Uh, coaches have done a good job of getting their attention. And we've just, we've just played cleaner. And uh, you know, we've given up some plays here or there. But... Um, so, you know, it'll be nice to be able to get, you know, we haven't had Sheridan in a while. You know, he's a veteran player. Um, he's played a lot of football and he's got a lot of experience. He understands the game, you know, so um, you know, we've been kind of growing some guys up. Uh, some, you know, young guys are, they, there's even guys that are really good young players, they're not anywhere what they're going to be with some experience. So I think that part, the fact that we're undefeated uh, and we've had to play a lot of guys and guys have gotten some good experience, I think that will serve us well at some point. But it's nice to get some of these guys back that are a little more seasoned. Can you talk about Sheridan. Is he still day-to-day -day or is he weird? He's, he's still day-to-day, -day, uh, but we're, you know, hopefully, you know, today and tomorrow I think are the critical days for him. Uh, you know, we thought he was going to play last week and uh, just, you know, literally on Friday. Uh, we found out they, he couldn't go, so you know he's he's still day to day, but you know we we are hopeful uh, that he'll have a good week and and uh, we'll be able to go. But that's well, where we are. Tyler and RJ at this point. Uh, they'll be back. Is the plan for XT to kind of gradually add more players? Yeah. In yep. Each week? Yep. It is. You know, just keep kind of increasing his workload during the week at practice, you know, still being smart with him. Uh, he's played a lot of football, you know, he's, he's, he's been around a while. Uh, he understands things and, but just try to, you know, slowly increase his work capacity through the week and um, be smart with him. And then just, you know, I mean, he's, uh, and then he, he's, he, he knows what he can and can't do. Uh, but he's, he's in a good spot. And like I said, the doctors feel really good about him. Um, obviously, he, he, he looked pretty good the other night. Uh, but, you know, we're just trying, to, just trying to be cautious with him. And so, but yeah, we'll definitely, I think he'll play more than six plays. Hope so. Has the offensive line progressed about how you would have wanted and expected at this point in the season? They have. I think I think they've come together. I uh, thought we had a few miscues the other night, but it's a good group. It's a good group. We've had more continuity than we've had. Uh, probably the biggest thing is I, 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 I wish we'd been able to, through six games, get a little bit more playing time for two or three other guys. And uh, just hasn't worked out that way, you know, but um, – you know, because I I am confident there's you know with our with our backups, but uh, we just you know 
we're just sometimes you feel like you're living and dying on every play and uh you know you got your best guys out there and they've earned that uh but the continuity the the consistency for dj i think has made a huge difference and uh again not perfect you know i don't think anybody's gonna win the outland trophy right right away but we are much better we're much better in every area uh we've protected our quarterback well uh we've been able to um you know, have pretty good balance throughout the season. And, uh, you know, we, we, we've had a lot of explosive plays. Uh, so they're, they're where I hope we'd be. I mean, you know, still a work in progress, but in a long season ahead, but they are uh, a group that has really gelled well. I mean, I'm really proud of Marcus Tate from where he was last year to where he is now. It's night and day. Um, you know, Blake is a, is a true freshman, and he, he had probably – he probably had his worst game the other night. Just got beat inside two or three times, uh, oversetting on some things and some footwork stuff. But, but he's the same thing. Very conscientious kid, physical. Um, he really can do everything we need him to do. And he's just growing each and every week. J Max, a pro. I mean, J Mac. He's gonna play. He's gonna play for a long time. That yeah, guy's. He's as good as we've ever had. I mean, he's a really, really good football player. Uh, Putnam, same thing, man. Just, just a. It just it, it's amazing how consistent he is. Uh, just incredibly consistent. You can just count on him week in and week out. And then Walker Parks is he's he's the Shipley up front. You know he just brings a fire to the group that you love. What's the ceiling for this running game, and how much better do you see them it getting over the second half? Of the oh, we, I think we can get a lot better. Uh, you know, and it's not and it's everybody. It's not just your OL. It's it's making the right decisions in the run game because you know we, we'll put we put. We put a lot of it will come on our quarterback too. You know, it's making the right decisions, not just the quarterback, but also the right decisions with our backs, as far as you know, you know, trusting things, not cutting on air, pressing blocks. You know, I mean, it's it's got to all sync up. It's not always the line. Sometimes your back doesn't, you know, he he tries to do too much, you know, uh, and so it's, and it's your tight ends. It's your receivers doing a good job, you know, on the on the second and third level. Uh, it's all got to be tied together, and then it's your it's your RPOs off of it. It's your control plays. It's your screen game. There's a lot of things that go into your run game in 2022 uh, that was different in 1992. Uh, so it, it's a totality of it. But I think I think we can be a really really good running football team. Uh, DJ has been a huge factor for us. Uh, you know, I mean. I mean, he's, he's, I mean, third and three the other night, backed up, and we call a quarterback draw, you know, and he ran for 40 yards. Uh, so uh, that wouldn't probably happen last year. You know, he's just, he's just a, he's just a very, very, uh, you know, confident kid, you know. So I think we can, I think we have the ability to be a very productive running offense, and uh, we're going to need to be uh, for sure as we keep moving forward. Is Kobe? injury kind of affect that does somebody move up into that spot or is it more Dominique Dominique is our third you know he'll be our third guy Dominique Thompson and I and I love Dominique Thompson and it's I hate that he's another one of those guys kind of like I was saying on our OL I hate we haven't been able to get him more opportunity because he's a really he's a really good player uh but his time will come it'll come at some point and y'all are gonna go like wow where'd that guy come from he's a he's a really tough Hard to tackle guy. He's he's got great vision. He's got he's he's really he's got great hips. For a, you don't really wouldn't think that he's a big strong thick kid, but he's he's a really really good runner. Big quads, and big ones. Uh, but he's you know he'll move up, and then we're trying to redshirt Keith, so we're kind of we're kind of holding him. But he'll he'll have to be ready and travel. I think he's played one game, so we still got three games that we could play him in, and uh, and not use it, burn his red shirt. So. Um, and we feel good about both of those guys, but it's unfortunate because you know we're going to need Kobe at some point. But hopefully, uh, you know it'll it'll be a good opportunity for Will and, and Maffa. Uh, I thought Maffa had a great game the other night. You know he's 5.1 a carry, and you know you're starting he's starting to really hit his stride a little bit. Um, but our hope is Kobe's ready to go for that that November run. Uh, you know when uh, when we're here back at the home stretch. Just a product of being more willing to pull it 
now this year than he would have been last year. I definitely think that's a part of it, just his, just his want to, you know. Like, he really wants to be, uh, you know, better. And, you know, looking back last year, there was a lot of opportunities where he didn't run it or when he did run it, he just he, – he, he felt like he wasn't as good as he needed to be. No, he also was hurt. Uh, a lot of part, a lot of last year with a, with a big old knee brace on, uh, but that was one of the things he really committed to, and that's why he lost you know 30 pounds and uh, you know just kind of changed his body and um, you know he and, and not just running the football but just being more athletic and uh, mobile in the pocket, you know being able to escape and extend plays, and you've seen that this year. He some of our biggest plays have come off of scrambles. You know, we've had some huge scramble, and that's football. I mean, that's that's that happens at every level in football. Uh, you got a quarterback who can move around, and you know you don't have to be uh, Deshaun Watson. You know, you don't have to be uh, Trevor even, and, and have like wheels like that. You you just got to be able to, you just got to be athletic and to be able to. I mean, watch Mahomes. I mean, he's not some burner. But this guy's so athletic. He's so athletic in the pocket, and he has such a feel, and he can extend plays. And it's just, it's hard to cover guys a long time, right? And then he, and then he's accurate. He can make all the throws, you know. So, I think he, that was something that he really wanted to add to his game this year. And he's just, he's just much more confident. So many guys now you had to force into action last year. Now a year later, are you having to correct less on film when you go through it, or are you just able to turn on the film halfway through? Oh man, are you listen? I wanted to vomit watching the Florida State game last year. I mean, it was so painful to watch it. Uh, we were so bad. Oh my God, we won, uh, which is a miracle. Uh, but we were so bad, and yeah, I don't, I don't. We don't really have games like that this year. I mean, we're we're, we're correct. We, there's all. It's never as good as you think, and it's never as bad as you think. That's always been the case. There's always stuff that you got to do better and. You're always coaching, but you know, no grading our tape this year versus last year is night and day. Uh, I mean, night and day in every area. And so, yeah, and, and again, you just watch our game from last year and you're just going, holy cow, we won this game. I don't even know how we won the game. It's crazy. But we made just an, but it just shows that's the heart of your guys. We won that game last year on just heart and grit. And will to win, and you know, just uh, they think they're supposed to win. You know, I mean, that play to Jay Ross down the field. I mean, we 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 get a sack, fumble, touchdown in the fourth quarter, and you know, we get the stop with 340, I think. That to, and then we we hadn't moved the ball, and we hadn't we hadn't had a game-winning drive, and all of a sudden, man, here we go, and we hit Jay Ross, and then Shipley breaks off the long run. I mean, it was just a. I mean, it, we were very fortunate because we lost the turnover margin last year. You know, they got a score on us on defense. Uh, we it was a it was a struggle. We were so unsettled. Uh, we were young and inexperienced. You know, looking at Shipley now compared to last year's night and day, uh, missed plays. I mean, so it it was a it was a frustrating season as far as just grading and correcting and teaching week in and week out this year it's been better you know again it's a lot every week still but it's but it's 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 more stuff that you would expect you know um you know normal normal corrections normal teaching and not some of the just you know frustrating things that we did last year